So for chapter two, guys, the main thing that came up for me was it's not good for man to be alone. I love this verse and I've been studying it a lot and I'm learning a lot from it. That would be verse number, where is it? Oh, it has to be somewhere here. Here. And the Lord God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him and help me for him. What I learned from here, like we can't do this alone, guys, like at all levels of life, whether it be in marriage, relationship, family, finances, faith, anything, even journeying through this Bible, we can't do it alone. Don't let the devil deceive you to think, oh, I'm going to sit in the corner and I'm going to do my own thing and God is going to listen to me. No, God doesn't work like that. The principle is clear. God does not work in isolation. God works with people in networks and communities and connections. In fact, when God appeared to Abraham, he told him, yeah, I'm going to make your name great. But the main point was through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. God is a community. God is communal and God is networked, networking, if that makes sense. So that was Genesis 15, by the way, one, two, four, maybe. And so, guys, let's do this together. If you know someone who is struggling to read the Bible, if you know someone who wants to journal through the Bible like we are, invite them. Let them subscribe to the channel. Let them join the WhatsApp group where we can have interactive questions and answers and insights and pray for one another, share prayer requests and everything because it's not good for anyone to be alone. Because even God, guys, even God is not alone if god is not alone who are you to be alone if god is not isolated if god is a community who are you to think you can stand alone so that was the principle the promise for me in this chapter was i love how god creates the garden of eden the garden and when you look at the garden of eden they had everything they needed there's abundance. It says like everything was prepared for Adam before he showed up on the scene. Everything was perfect. So when I read Genesis 2, the promise I, I'm getting from God is that God is an abundant God, that God is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yeah, uh, that's Psalm 23. So what I'm getting from Genesis 2 is that God will, will give me everything. God will provide all my needs and everything that is for me. He, he prepares a place for me. And, and we can pull this from Genesis 1 too, how he spends literally five full days creating a place, an atmosphere, a space, a safe space for Adam. So I believe God has created a safe space for me as well. The person I see in, the, in this chapter is obviously my man, Adam. And like verse 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she shall, uh, she was taken out of man. I'm like, wow. It's like the first time Adam sees, sees uh, Eve and is like, bone of my bones. Like, how did he know that? I feel like there's a deeper connection than just being, seeing someone. It, it's deeper. It's deeper. And it, it goes deeper, guys. It goes even deeper because apparently there's somewhere here where Adam goes to sleep, 21. And I guess this is when I try to find patterns and connect it to a person. Obviously, Jesus is the second Adam because this Adam is going to fall in chapter 3. But then Jesus comes and gives back the dominion and teaches us how to do things the right way. But in a real sense, I see many connections between Adam and Jesus because it says here that, that he slept, yeah, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh. And this is the beginning of Eve. So this is the beginning of Eve. Eve comes because someone lost a rib. So for me, I guess it was also a principle from here that for you to receive, you have to give. And that there has to be sacrifice. Now, we're thinking of Adam and his woman, but now let's think of Jesus and his bride. Jesus also had to give in order to save or receive his bride. 
and we see him on the cross losing his rib in a sense he was pierced on the side and that blood that flowed is what saves you and me my friend that life that that sacrifice is what makes all these conversations even possible because jesus god was very clear in the day you eat you shall die and so jesus had to die to save us and, and i see that in here somehow I, I don't know if you guys see it. let me know in the comments but do you guys see what i see <laughs> do you guys see what i see okay i'll, I'll close in, in a more practical sense mm, i'll leave the other personal stuff and let's do chapter three and then we'll be done